welcome to the NPTEL module on uh, strategic trade and protectionism, theories and empirics. Uh, this is as part of the MOOC program of the ministry uh, where uh, you know many uh, you know, latest aspects of trade and strategies uh, are, are required to be discussed in detail <coughs> uh, for holistic learning. So, we are uh, you know having this course particularly to attach number of information pertaining to international trade and number of latest strategies taken up by member countries to restrict their flows of goods, uh, goods and services. So, in this context, uh, this is the introduction to the strategic trade and protectionism. Myself, Dr. Pratap Si Mohanty, I am a faculty member at the you know, Indian Institute of uh, Technology, Roorkee. So, let me have the privilege to explain you uh, the details of strategic trade. Uh, as an anecdotal, uh, anecdotal you, know, uh, you know, explanation to the international trade, <coughs> we need to have uh, various theories, various facts, various challenges, various cases, then uh, you know, various you know, groups formed by different countries. Uh, so, and, and what is the structure by which you are following are actually the cover, coverage of this particular lecture. Now, as, as part of introduction to the strategic trade, I, I just like to highlight here, based on the World Economic Outlook data published in April 2019, it is very recent data. So, this shows that the world trade growth has actually slowed down by, by, by uh, roughly around 3 percent in 2018 due to major trade protectionism. And this is much uh, below to the you know growth rate of 4.6 percent in 2017, uh, which is actually caused largely by caused largely by new and uh, you know retaliatory tar tariff measures, as, as as mentioned by the World Economic Outlook. And this is also uh, also uh, been uh, you know hampered by the recent trade war between U.S. and uh, China. Uh, and uh, or due to and, and other factors like slower economic growth and volatility in financial market. And uh, uh, some other authors mentioned in different uh, writings that uh, it is not just due to these factors also increasing integration among the member countries really uh, caused the you know protectionism in a different form and then the strategies actually raised by the members in integrating their uh, trade among themselves. WEO World Economic uh, Outlook also clarifies the fact that trade protectionism actually lead to uh, some forms of you know uh, diversion to the trade and this creates lots of imbalances among the member countries. Therefore, uh, those imbalances largely you know uh, factor uh, in the macroeconomic you know disturbances. Now, you know to understand uh, uh, the, 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 the theo, I mean the course, the, the module as part of the introduction lecture, we must understand some of the you know factors, I mean some of the uh, conf conflicting contexts like fallacies of international trade. It says that one fallacy is that uh, all theories, all experts suggested repeatedly or all the member countries in the different negotiations of WTO. Uh, repeatedly mentions about uh, reduction of trade that will facilitate uh, international trade and all the country will grow together. Uh, but you know conversely or, 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 or quite uh, paradoxically all the members are actually imposing restrictions. So, this kind of fallacy is actually you know uh, is, is, is uh, which has led to the problems. Uh, then the second point here I am mentioning that you know the, those trade policies as advocated in different rounds or different groups that st st stand to benefit from trade restrictions to the member countries. So, therefore, the you know groups or the restriction they raise are actually benefiting the member countries. So, uh, so, the, 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 so the, this is clearly a fallacy to the international uh, approach theories. <coughs> and why economists are largely worried about international trade? Because the way uh, strategies or uh, you know restrictions have been rising over the time under the negotiations of WTO or, or under the uh, caveat of uh, WTO, 
who you know these these restrictions have been actually multifaceted and very difficult to you know capture so <coughs> the, i mean for your example there are 25000 cases are actually raised uh, relating to non tariff various uh, by the member countries uh, out of that only you know less than 400 cases are actually taken to the table uh, after validating uh, all its submissions then out of 490 you know seven cases only six have been i mean discuss have been solved till the date now imagine how you know uh, there are things are moving and how those problems are uh, becoming you know multiple so how to solve it is a bigger challenge to the economist now myth is that you know a country with jack of all trade will lead uh, the trade is actually not necessarily true that was counteracted by some of the theories especially in comparative advantage the, uh, you know framework and also will emphasize revealed comparative advantage framework to contradict this uh, context. Uh, we will talk about certain uh, recent theories accordingly and the factors associated to the explanation of those myths and uh, certain evidences examples will be also followed in the due course of our lecture and their effects in terms of social societal welfare, countries welfare, consumers or produ producer losses can be explained. Rationality behind the data will also be uh, checked. While we said uh, that uh, you know uh, social and political questions are important, we need to actually check the history of their protectionism. Then only uh, a better answer could be actually uh, attributed. And uh, last uh, sort of uh, you know our module will follow with the birth of WTO and how it is the instrumental in making the trade you know more uh, you know, transparent and less restrictive. So, this is the dilemma we have already explained. Now, uh, so uh, our theories largely let us come back to the theories and empirics accordingly our th th theories will largely talk about the strategic trade and also talk about certain possibility of uh, protectionism based on the theoretical understanding. We will also unfold the discussion for big country versus small country debates in this regard how big countries uh, are benefited due to import restrictions or tariff or how small countries should be attached with a big country. So, that big small countries should always take the advantage uh, may be the case that small countries not uh, you know influencing the terms of trade under certain circumstances, but still it is beneficial for the small country to be in trade. Now, as part of the discussion on theory, we will also talk about intra industry versus inter industry trade within the industry and uh, outside industry or, or industry with another industry or within the industry or among the firms how trade takes place. And this is the debate we will refer to the <coughs> role of economy of scale, economies of scale of production and thereby we will talk about monopolistically competitive market stickly competitive market and its role in differentiating products so thereby trade takes place and the trade within trade is also oh, 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 is also important and uh, this is the present days you know trade uh, you know context and while discussing this we will also emphasize the you know <coughs> the uh, protection the type of protection the different forms of protection uh, like you know tariff non tariff barriers out of that which forms of protection is more effective we will analyze uh, with the help of consumers and uh, pro pro you know producers losses or, or, or the net welfare changes to the country and uh, we will emphasize at the last of the module as I just said on trade creation versus trade diversion uh, while forming integration some groups are attached with some groups, but it is also cutting off from another groups. So, therefore, some uh, there are possibility of creation versus diversion and uh, in that particular uh, context we will uh, discuss uh, discuss various forms of groups like uh, of, uh, you know foreign trade agreement, preferential trade agreement, customs union, common market. So, <coughs> we will be emphasized <coughs> on the very last week of our lecture. 
uh, that is the 8th week of our lecture, we will talk about those aspects in detail. So, here is the map, uh, complete map of our understanding on different theories. Here you look at the classical and uh, how they believe on uh, you know, complete versus incomplete specialization. There is no question of incomplete specialization discussed in classical form framework, we will discuss. Similarly, the new theories of trade. Uh, especially uh, on the understanding of uh, available to resources and uh, factor prices, factor price equalization and technological changes and uh, then economy of scale. <coughs> then here we are emphasizing economy of scale and intra industry argument where the strategy derived, strategic trade policy actually derived based on this. And uh, therefore, the strategy lead to some forms of inter interaction among the countries. So, geographical uh, proximity or the multinationals, uh, new goods, growth, their co connection, transport cost are, are quite important in explaining the strategic trade policy or uh, in the context of new trade policy uh, accordingly. So, therefore, this is the you know one which is very important uh, for explanation. Now, as a quality check of the facts and figure we said or the theories we are going to explain starting with a case study here. Now, recently uh, as highlighted in 2019 May, uh, you know US Census Bureau BBC research. Uh, so, we are uh, uh, citing the source here you know to authenticate the discussion that there has been a trade war between you know US and ch China especially on the extent of restriction they, they raise for their products. Now, uh, uh, to count a few uh, US tariffs on China, US tariffs on China uh, in total it is 250 uh, US billion dollar. So, 250 billion US dollar are actually the tariffs on Chinese product raised by US. The tariffs you uh, imposed was uh, in, in 2018. So, and tariffs threatened by Trump uh, further uh, to the level of 320 billion US dollar. Now, at this moment till 2018 it was it was up to, uh, to 250 billion US dollar whereas, uh, that uh, I mean whereas, the ch I mean <coughs> the Chinese, Chinese tariffs on US, China actually retaliated to it also. Uh, uh, so, uh, accordingly that 110 billion US dollar imposed in 2018, they have a target actually uh, to make it 120 billion US dollar uh, as a China reported. So, now uh, total Chinese goods imported to US in 2018 was 539 billion US dollar. So, now look at uh, who is dependent on whom and how the restrictions are made and uh, you know, US is deliberately doing it to uh, you know, restrict Chinese imposts, uh, uh, Chinese products and their imposts to US and to protect their country. So, they, now let us you know interpret largely why they are charging point number one why and what kind of imp uh, restrictions and uh, you know and wh why retaliation then then fourth one is you know what what is the theoretical explanation to it theoretical explanation to it and how india is affected india in this context india's con india's case must have been also discussed in our d course of lecture so and and does uh, you know i mean uh, partnering with another country or another group is going to reduce the burden on the restrictions made by another country. So, therefore, uh, uh, you know uh, integration is more important as well to be emphasized later on. So, now an overview of our course this portion we are not covering as part of uh, the lecture we are only covering this much. You go and check my PPT and find out uh, so, trade theories we will discuss classical mercantilism, uh, Adam, uh, you know, Adam Smith absolute cost advantage, comparative cost advantage theory, hexa rolling theory where uh, they largely talk about uh, the you know factor endowment and their differences in trade and also criticize their theory by, by certain empirical testing. Then uh, from the comparative advantage theory we will emphasize the opportunity cost of production and the discussion in trade. We will talk about the offer, I mean uh, not the offer curve, I mean offer curve through two, two dimensions, I mean the, the linear production possibility frontier. Here we will emphasize uh, the you know 
increasing cost function that is responsible for differentiating the product is largely emphasized by economy of scale and imperfectly competitive market. After discussing there are many other theories are not captured in this uh, you know diagram uh, you will find out in the due course of the lectures. And the last uh, part of the uh, lecture is on uh, trade policy and integration and integration. So, tariff non tariff barriers especially you know especially TBTs technical barriers to trade uh, sanitary and phytosanitary measures and and, and plus uh, you know uh, RTAs, we will talk about RTAs regional trading uh, arrangements among the member country as a strategy for uh, protectionism of their trade. Now, these are the people, these are the experts by which uh, we start the uh, uh, discussion for international trade, Smith, Ricardo and Malthus. So, trade theories is an anecdotal uh, you know explanation to the international trade, mercantilism uh, we will discuss. Uh, I mean uh, we will discuss in, in our next uh, you know uh, next to next lecture where uh, William Petty, Thomas Moon and, 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 and Antonio are actually important in absolute cost advantage theory Adam Smith is, is quite uh, I mean I mean he is the father of economics uh, his theory is the foundation behind the international trade theories as well. Whereas, in uh, comparative advantage theory a uh, comparative cost advantage have been mapped and accordingly David Ricardo talked about international trade. Now, uh, as part of the modern explanation to the theory we talked about resources and its explanation emphasized by Hexer and Olin and there are specific factor in income distribution model mentioned by Samuelson and Jones even uh, Hexer, Olin and Samuelson model and uh, that is famously uh, known as factor equalization uh, theory. And the, there is another modern theory mentioned by standard model of trade by Krugman and Oxfield. And uh, let us check another case to the uh, understanding uh, in uh, as reported in the financial express, uh, financial express here in 2016 December 16. And uh, especially uh, here we will talk about the reveal comparative advantage in one of the module of our uh, you know lecture on the understanding of strategic trade. Uh, so, where uh, the emphasis on uh, should India be worried on Chinese you know growth <coughs> or Chinese or, or rather trade between or the trade war between US and China or simply the Chinese growth. Now, with the contribution of Balasa's revealed comparative advantage uh, theory, I must mention here that you know India should not worry because of the fact that though comparatively in uh, US has huge uh, China has huge advantage. China has huge advantage in manufacturing goods uh, for competitive advantage front as well as in revealed competitive advantage stage China as compared to India. So, there are different in all other uh, you know <coughs> components look at all other components like food items, agriculture and raw materials, fuels uh, or metals uh, and precious metals etcetera or precious stones etcetera. From 1990 till 2014 data. <coughs> is reported in financial express that India has you know advantages uh, compared to revealed compared to advantages. So, therefore, uh, with the rise in China is not going to create any uh, you know further threat to Indian context. So, therefore, it is not problematic and India is should may be should be cautious and may be cautious in, in, in one of the field uh, especially in manufacturing product or manufacturing manufacturing case. And as you all know, India has Indian government has already started a number of uh, you know steps, especially for Make in India program. And this was the original you know catchphrase in in, in China, uh, you know, ten years back, where they they talked about uh, you know Make, make in China model. <coughs> so India has been trying its best to actually have uh, manufacturing base of many products. Now, let us have uh, the discussion of the theories once again in, in a diagram. So, here uh, the in this color we are discussing mercantilism in, in one of the, the lectures. Uh, then in another lecture we will have absolute cost advantage theory by Adam Smith. Then there are some of the implications uh, how should there be trade, should it be mutually beneficial. So, uh, what are the problems of absolute cost advantage could be discussed. Then uh, you know 
the theory of competitive advantage or, uh, would also be taken off where fixed proportions and increasing I mean fixed uh, cost function and increasing opportunity cost function will be emphasized. When it is increasing cost function the production possibility frontier we are, which I am going to we, I am going to use it in one of the lecture and you can clarify accordingly will be actually non-linear and concave to the origin and that has led to or that lead to or that leads to incomplete specialization. Whereas, in case of fixed opportunity cost or constant opportunity cost, uh, we have complete specialization because we have a corner solution and these answers you will get it from uh, the respective lecture series and you check our schedule and also the respective questions in each of the you know <coughs> week lecture uh, or week module you will find out uh, the better understanding of each of the context. So, there each of the theory suggests that gains from trade and gains from specialization are two important aspects of the theory. So, far as the new classical theories are concerned or the modern theories are concerned we largely refer to hexter rule model and that is purely based on uh, you know factor availability or the resource availability and, uh, and also the famous word called factor endowment that can be explained through factor intensity or factor abundance this is clearly highlighted in that particular lecture and it suggests that you know higher the resources higher the endowment you have higher the possibility of specialization and minimizing the cost and therefore, there will be trade ok. So, actual in a model is very very important. Now, certainly it is based on certain assumptions you must check it accordingly. Now, uh, so this has led to two interpretation one is called uh, factor price equalization theorem which says that wage rate in one lead to wage rate in another and interest rate in one lead to interest I mean equalization of interest rate in another W1 equal to W2 and R1 equal to R2. Whereas, as, as highlighted by Stolper Samuelson uh, theory uh, that W1 uh, not just equal to W1 I mean W2 I mean wage rate in one country will equalize will be equalized with wage rate in another country instead of that uh, you know, that will be happening plus it will equalize across the firms like W1 will be equalized with R1 and W2 will be equalized with R2. So, therefore, there will be factor price equalization, but emphasize in different format. So, in uh, new trade theory, uh, especially the role of economy of scale and its connection to international trade strategies, where the economy of scale is important and increasing eco economy of scale, which caused the monopolization of the product and differentiation of product lead to certain forms of imperfections in the market and therefore, that will cause intra-industry trade instead of inter-industry. The all previous theories have been emphasizing on inter-industry framework to explain the international trade. So, uh, so therefore, these theory is little new and it integrated more to explain the intra-industry trade or you know, trade within the industry. And so, accordingly various interpretations are made and how outsourcing or offshoring are actually one of the strategies made by different member countries or different countries to harness the benefits of economy of scale would be taken off in, in one of the module, uh, one of the week of the lectures. Then uh, we also emphasize partial equilibrium setup as compared to general equilibrium setup. So, here we will take the help of offer curve or simple demand and supply uh, diagram to understand whether the, the approach lead to complete specialization or incomplete specialization. Now, here uh, the, uh, the module specifically uh, on, on tariffs uh, and tariff uh, uh, in the context of small country, uh, their types, a uh, small country, large country and implications on them especially on, uh, on consumers, producers, government revenue, then, then, then trade effect. Uh, then how it distributes income to the small country and large country will be taken off. And uh, the you know relating to the tariff another one is called non-tariff barriers like you know recently discussed uh, I mean in the present day debates on TBT and SPS it is not mentioned you can write down technical barriers to trade and SPS are one uh, are the recent uh, you know restrictions raised by different member countries and different cases are observed import quota, import sub, uh, export subsidy, voluntary export restraint, <coughs> technical uh, you know, uh, subsidies, dumping etcetera are part of the discussion of non-tariff barriers. And last uh, but not the least uh, aspect of international I mean strategic trade and protectionism aspect is, uh, is, is through WTO, World Trade Organization or the formation of customs union 
there are different types of customs union would be emphasized preference altering agreement, uh, free trade area, customs union, common market or, or common union would be also discussed in detail. So, now while we discuss this we will be certainly interested in uh, identifying uh, the one context called trade creation versus trade diversion. So, <coughs> trade creating strategies versus trade diverting strategies or the membership among the, the countries actually lead to some forms of creation versus diversion. Whether diversion creates net welfare uh, or, or positively or negatively can be also identified and accordingly a theory of second based was also emphasized we will take, take off in the last week of the module. Now, having said all those discussions, I think it is always important that how to have a balance, how to take support. Here is the person facing the third party uh, to be attached. Now, <coughs> within the country members, entrepreneurs, government connection, international community, banks or other community in the context are very, very important and we have discussed. So, uh, certain other examples like you know cases for tra trade diversion are observed 200 American companies, 250 American companies uh, it has been observed that India has opened conversation with over 250 American companies that are ex exploring a shift in manufacturing operation from China as part of the discussion of uh, tra trade war. Now, uh, it is uh, recently debated and in, in discussed in, in many uh, newspaper highlighted the China plus one. Now, if you have manufacturing base in China, add another one plus one because China is not dependable that much in international trade discussion. Now, especially <coughs> uh, Samsung case, uh, I think uh, I have already uh, you know uh, I mean mentioned here. Under this strategy, business started shifted to Vietnam largely uh, and Thailand from mainland China, and these two. Southeast Asian nations have attracted free trade agreements uh, for third country exports. Especially the case of Samsung uh, operating uh, from Vietnam a few years ago and today contributes significantly to the country's gross domestic product. These markets in Southeast East Asian uh, you know, uh, 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 countries are actually very small and India's attraction is because of its huge market and growing uh, of its you know middle class. This is India's chance in history and must tap, tap as early as possible. So, <coughs> so uh, even as, as, as I discussed last number of distortions taken place especially for the supply side distortions are made due to oil prices and many other restrictions are made by forming groups. And famous example of forming group is uh, OPEC organization of petroleum exporting countries. And uh, you know uh, these developments increase the vulnerability of external sector of emerging market especially India and uh, there have been you know many other instances where consumption shifted, production shifted accordingly strategies uh, are actually developed by the member countries. Now, among the um, major economies running current account deficit India is the largest foreign exchange reserve holders and 8 largest among all countries of the world. So, <coughs> So, it is the largest holder so therefore, we are not uh, be worried so much. India has signed actually 28 multilateral or bilateral agreements uh, as per the recent trend uh, discussed. India is the seventh largest economy in terms of gross domestic product uh, uh, in terms of US uh, you know, uh, I mean US dollar. Then uh, it is the fastest growing major economy as for the average growth rate of India was not only higher than China during 2014, 15 to 17, 18, but also higher than that of all the top major economies in the world. In terms of purchasing power uh, parity calculation or adjustment, India's GDP is, uh, in, in, in dollar terms is actually third ranked in the world. This is highlighted here, all those figures I said is third ranked in the world. Now, similarly, the facts I have said is highlighted here, India's actually growth rate in terms of real GDP. Now, this is the external sector. Uh, over different period you can follow it off. Now, merchandise exports actually you know it is, it is in positive, merchandise imports is more than that of uh, the exports therefore, we have current account deficit therefore, it is negative and other figures are important reserve specially is, is, is uh, you know the eighth I mean it, reserves I have already said here that it is the eighth largest among all the countries in the world. We have largest foreign exchange reserves and uh, it is highlighted here as well. 
Now, these are the figures from economic latest economic survey 2018-19. Uh, and regarding international comparison of current account uh, balance, India, you know, or India especially uh, having you know negative current account uh, balance. Emerging and uh, developing uh, economies are also use, usually have, I mean in the recent years they have also negative balance of payments figures, but the, you know, the advanced countries has positive one. Checking with the import restrictions as per the 2017 Onctad data, uh, in 2017 very restrictive areas are actually India, I mean it is highlighted in the deep uh, you know green color and you can easily find out. And similarly, for the non-tariff based barriers, as I uh, said, uh, you know, we will have you know, uh, you know, seventh week lecture on it that uh, US is, is actually restricting more than 800 uh, you know, items, whereas nearly half of that actually restricted by India, then followed by Russia. Uh, so, last one to be discussed is a checkpoint for our understanding in the very uh, you know, beginning of the strategic trade lecture is related to the dispute cases raised by the member countries vis-a-vis -vis India uh, to solve the cases. Now, <coughs> here a case uh, is, is, is here mentioned that uh, red is highlighted as number of uh, you know, complaints raised by India related to you know, uh, you know, the disputes or non-tariff barriers or the restrictions. Uh, green are the uh, complaint raised by other countries and India is actually uh, negotiating it and uh, trying to solve it. So, as a complainant India there are 24 cases, as a respondent India there are 31 cases or complaint imposed on India's you know products or the restrictions, as a third party it is 100 and, uh, I mean 160. <coughs> now, another case to be attached here uh, as part of uh, international trade discussion, now especially on strategic trade and protectionism aspect in the very beginning lecture that recently <coughs> the WTO negotiations could able to solve a complaint raised by, by, by Bangladesh, see uh, you know a music band called Miles, we will have these details in our last week of the module and uh, the, ba uh, the band called Miles actually raised a complaint in the WTO you know, forum that India, uh, Indian movie uh, and, their, and the song composer Anu Malik uh, in that particular movie Murder has actually copied a song. And uh, <clears throat> so that again, uh, you know, in due course of, I mean, during that course of time, the uh, Bangladeshi composer again consulted with various experts of WTO, and they discussed with various member countries. And finally, it was agreed that you know this is a clear violation of copyright as part of the TRIPS trade related intellectual property rights. So this was under the TRIPS uh, segment where uh, music composition, music, uh, you know, uh, you know. <coughs> details related songs and their copy only 8 channels by which copy can be made for, for different songs or their music, but not more than that actually in India in that context actually violated as highlighted by different newspapers. And finally, Bangladesh won the case and that was a clear case out of the 6 disputed case solved. So, that was one of the most important case as an example of the role of WTO and settling the disputes of the member countries as part of the strategic and protectionism uh, framework. So, therefore, we have learned many aspects uh, in the very introduction, we will uh, expect all those details and their justification in their respective sessions. So, therefore, I will suggest everyone to you know mark the each of the words of mine as, a, as I discussed in the introduction lecture and try to clarify in their respective one. So, I hope uh, it gives a you know illuminating ideas of uh, strategic trade and protectionism and uh, rest will follow in the respective lectures with this I think I should close here. Thank you.